Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Monday Morning Tennis Rant. I want to start off by giving you an update on my student Safin. Some of you may know that I did a series titled Safin's Road to a Division I Scholarship and I haven't posted videos with Safin for a long time. And it's for a reason because Safin's been dealing with a terrible wrist injury. What happened nine months ago is that he felt a sharp pain in his right wrist and this did not happen from hitting a specific shot or anything like that. It just all of a sudden started hurting. And also there was a protruding bone between his index finger and the middle finger. And so bone was sticking out and it was causing him a stinging pain when he hit forehands and serves. He could hit backhands quite okay. So in any case, he tried to rest. He tried that this can maybe go away on its own. Of course, he was under the supervision of doctors and it just wouldn't go away. So now has come the time where he's gonna go under the knife, he's gonna have surgery, and he's gonna have the surgery next week, and he's gonna to have to take another two months off after he has the surgery. So it's gonna be pretty close to a whole year that he hasn't played any tennis, and this could not come at a worse time for Safin because he's trying to get a D1 scholarship. And I can tell you now that he has had a lot of offers. There's been four Division I schools that were interested in Safin. I talked to two of the coaches and they expressed a big interest in him and they loved the way he plays, more of a classical game, one-handed backhand. But it didn't work out for financial reasons. They couldn't come to an agreement, so Safin is still without a school. And once he comes back to the courts, it's gonna be April and he's not gonna have a lot of time left to find a college. So once he's back on the courts, we're gonna start recording again. And I'm gonna keep you guys updated, of course, with what's happening with Safin. I'm gonna to continue to record videos with him. And look, he's only 18. It's not the end of the world. It's an unfortunate thing that has happened. It's halted his development severely, this injury. And it's come at a very unfortunate time, but there are always options and there's still a little bit of time left. So no need to be down now, we have to Look forward to the future, take it one step at a time. Forehand back and slice, here we go. Come on, stay low, come on. Don't cheat on this, still gotta stay low. If you wanna slide, this is the right time to slide. Practice your sliding, come on. Come on, slide. Backhand, slide soften. Come on, come on. Let's burn out those shoes. Get you a new pair of shoes, come on. 10 more, one. Two, nine, come on, Safin. One more, slide. All right, so now let me tell you what happened on the ATP tour and the WTA tour in the past week. And before I start, I just wanna say that Novak Djokovic has equaled Steffi Graf with 377 weeks at position number one. Guys, Djokovic is gonna break all records, not just on the male side, he's gonna start beating some of the female records that are out there. So I just wanted to say that Djokovic what he's doing is absolutely spectacular and he's establishing himself by the numbers, okay, as the greatest of all time. But if you watch some of my other videos, I talk about something called the GOAT level, where I categorize multiple players as GOATs. And if you're interested to know why I do that, you can check out some of my previous videos. This is how crazy tennis media is. This is how crazy keyboard warriors are, especially on Twitter, is that a lot of people were writing EGA off. Yes, you heard it right. Number one player in the wor world was written off. People are saying that uh, she's done and she's not gonna win any more tournaments. And I'm so happy to see that Iga absolutely demolished the field like she was doing in 2022. Played Collins, who's a phenomenal player, and won 0-1. Played Kudamertova, who's a phenomenal player, won 0-1. Played Pegula in the final, who's on fire, ranked three in the world, and lost three games, won 3-0. That just goes to show you of the quality of Iga, in my opinion. She's the best mover on the tour. She's a female Djokovic. Her forehand is the best on tour. Might not be the most powerful one. There are female players who hit the ball harder maybe, but Iga applies the type of control that you see on the ATP tour. She has a tremendous amount of spin on her forehand. So that makes it, in my opinion, the best forehand on tour because I don't just look at power and ability to hit winners. I look at control. And that's for that reason why I categorize Djokovic's forehand as the greatest of all time. If you're interested to know why I did that, you can check out my other video on that topic. But it's just so funny to me that an obvious superstar with qualities that we haven't seen in many, many years 
uh, can get hate as well. I didn't think it would be possible, but it's possible. If you want to also see the delusion that some people have about tennis technique, you can check out a video on YouTube by typing in Świątek. forehand in slow motion on YouTube and just read the comments and you see that there are people giving Iga tips on the forehand saying that she has a terrible forehand. No, listen to me. Iga has the best forehand on the entire planet. You are confused by seeing certain characteristics that are style and comparing those stylistic characteristics to other players who are not even of the same gender and you're making conclusions based on that and then you're uh, putting that in the comment section, it's laughable. So if you guys want to get a good laugh, go to slow-mo forehand on YouTube and read some of the comments. You'll get a kick out of that. But let's move on to the ATP Tour. And I'm so happy to see that Alcaraz is playing the clay court swing. He's not playing Rotterdam. He's not playing in the U.S. in Delray. He's playing the clay court swing in South America. He just won the tournament in Buenos Aires. He's going to go to Rio next week. And I love seeing that because he is thinking of being the next dominant force on clay, especially at the French Open once Rafa is done. And this is the right path to do it. I love to see this. So. Uh, big respect for the management, management team of Alcaraz and the decisions that they're making. I'm a big fan of the tournament choices. And I do think, I've said it in many videos, that out of all the youngsters, Alcaraz is by far the best. Think about it this way, he's only 19 and he's already won seven titles. Players that won seven titles at the age of 19 are players like Agassi, Becker, absolute legends of the sport and he's among those legends, he's going to be one of the greatest players that has ever played the game. Um, we have to give him time, of course, can't put too much pressure on him, but he's the real deal, guys. Now, another player who has been kind of bashed as of late is Medvedev. People are starting to write him off as well. But Medvedev is an absolute legend, a number one player in the world, okay? There's not many number ones in the world. It's almost impossible to reach that position, but he did. So the caliber of player that you have to be to be ranked number one with Federer, Rafa, and Djokovic around, it's astronomical high level of play that you need to possess. And Medvedev has that. And so he's highly capable of not only winning the tournament that he did this week in Rotterdam by beating Sinner, who's also playing really well, but he's a contender for Grand Slams and big titles for many, many years ahead and then finally we had a tournament uh, here in Delray Beach very close to me where Taylor Fritz beat Kecmanovic in the final it was a very strong tournament this year and Taylor is ranked number seven now but Nadal is going to lose some points Rublev is going to lose some points next week and they got 500 points coming off so Fritz is actually ranked number five in the world okay um, next time the ranking comes out so five in the world for Fritz huge accomplishment of course he's got a lot of points to defend in Indian Wells but American tennis is doing great. There's a lot of American guys playing really well. We got TFO, we got Fritz, we got Paul, we got Korda, and there's a lot of other guys that I'm not mentioning right now who are also playing well. That's it, guys, for this week's uh, Monday morning rant. I will see you guys next Monday. I wish everyone a good week.